Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Darren. I hope you're all well and safe and having a good stitchy week. So, I know this doesn't look like a stitch with me, but it will be a stitch with me. <laughs> um, so, uh, I had Denise, I think it was, asking how I put a ground guard and that on my project. So what I thought I'd do, I'm gonna have a new start today. So I thought I'd show you how I get everything set up. So I do apologize for any kind of shakiness to start with as I get things done. So, probably just want to play next. So as you can see, I've already marked where I'm gonna be starting my project. And apologies, you can probably hear the cats in the background. So, um, this is gonna be the new chart and creations chart I got. So I've already counted out um, the amount of stitches I need, and then I counted how many I've got left over of the squares, and then went my way in. So I've got 10 in from this way, and 14 in from this way. Oops, you can't see. So I've got 10 in from here, spare, and 14 there. So that's an all the way around border. So what I do is I get it where I need it to be. And I forgot the clamps. and the shakiness and everything else. <laughs> so what I do is I get it lined up on the top and try and get it centered. That's about right there. And then so that's the first one done. And I always press it so it's right. And then any excess fabric I've got at the bottom, I fold it up to where the bottom of the Q-snap is. It's like trying to do my, my open my box. <laughs> and that's that one. And then I will then put them on the sides. Tighten that part up. So this one's probably going to be a little bit shaky. Well, I'm just showing you how to do this part. It's easier doing this by hand, holding the camera, than trying to do it while it's in the frame, uh, in the foam holder. So that's that part. So then I have this excess fabric here. So I generally just fold or roll it up. Do that part. So, what I'm going to do before I put the ground guard on is I'm going to change views and put in my holder and then I'll show you how I put the ground guard on. So, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, we're back. So, I've just put it on my frame so I've got two hands. So, hopefully, you can see this okay, Denise. So, as you can see, what I've done here, not everyone, obviously, not everyone has these, but I've just rolled up the, any excess fabric and just pinned it with one of my magnetic ties. Obviously you don't, if you haven't got these, it'll still do exactly the same. And get your ground guard, and I always start at the top corner. And then I bring it down, and then just tuck, hopefully you can see, tuck any excess fabric there, in, oops, to the ground guard. Pull that around, and then do the same on the, Opposite side, and that's it. Just bam, guard done. Easy as that. So, any excess fabric is under there. Obviously, if you roll it up, you have the underneath side on top. So, if you do get any marks on there, you're not going to see it through stitching, or if it's on your stitching side, then cover it up. And that's it. So it's just the same if you've got longer piece of fabric, say at this side, again you just roll it over, scroll, roll it up, and then just tuck it into your ground guard. So some do it from the top, some do it underneath. I always do it on the top because it's easier. <laughs> so that's how I put my ground guard on. So I hope that helped. Um, but obviously, if you need any more advice, do let me know. So right, I'm gonna get ready for stitching now, so I'll be back again in a minute. Okay, we're back. So, the first colour I'm going to be using is 310. Now this one I'm going to do 10 stitch, because it's on 28 count. 
So we're doing 28 count easy guide, two over one ten stitch. Hopefully I don't have a problem threading my needle today. It's a brand new needle. <laughs> but fingers crossed. So my so this is going back to uh, before mentioning how I do my ten stitch. So this is where I'm gonna be starting. So my very first stitch will be here, which is zoom it in. So my very first stitch is gonna be there on the on the line. I do the loop method. There we go, started. So this one, I may do it a different way with the stitchy side of things. Um, I saw someone, I can't remember which floss tube it was now, someone mentioned it to me anyway. And basically, what she does is she works one colour as long as the string goes, but in a 10 by 10 block, if you know what I mean. So she will start, pick every colour in this block, then work it all the way across until the string runs out. But we'll see. Or I might just work across and then down, so then you can see things coming in, but that mean I won't see a tiger for a while. Uh, but never mind. I have a cat right behind me, <laughs> kitty. Hmm. So where are we going from there? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Hmm. Okay, that was a big jump. What are you after, kitty? So this one has a lot of colours in it. There's 106 colours, I think. So, it's definitely going to be very colourful as well. There's a lot of blues and purples and whatever colours in there, so it's going to be pretty colourful. So I apologise, you can probably hear Kitty. She's attacking something right behind me, but I don't know why I did what. What you after? I think she wants to get another colour. <laughs> but this cat is a wuss. Bear with me just two seconds. So yeah, she wanted to get under the cover. It's degrees here and she wants to get under the cover to keep warm. So yes my cats are strange. <laughs> so so I'm gonna do this in ten by ten blocks so we'll see how we go with this one. So, I want to thank everybody as well for the, the birthday wishes. I've got absolutely loads, both on my Facebook page and on YouTube. So, thank you very much everybody. It was an eventful day. So, I spent the majority of it on a computer doing my college course. So I got everything done that I needed to get done in the morning, so the washing, etc. Did my floss tube video and then started my college course. So I started my college course probably about half past ten and I finished just put that out. Um, I finished at four o'clock. But that was only for the two units. I've still got the assessment to do. So today's Sunday. So I'm going to be doing the assessment right after I finish doing this. What was I saying about threading a needle? Brand new needle and I still can't thread it. There we go. Um, 
So yes, yeah, so I'm going to be doing my assessment once I finish doing this stitch with me. I'm hoping you can see where I am. So that's going to be fun. I, don't, I was going to start the assessment last night after I finished doing the, the unit. But as I say, it was like half past four. And I knew I'd be speaking with my mum and my brother. Because obviously my brother's birthday as well. Um, so we're doing the video chat. So I didn't want to start the assessment. Just in case I didn't get finished in time. Because I don't know how long it's going to take me. So, I stopped doing the computer stuff, and then I thought I'll do that first thing in the morning, and then that's out of the way, and then hopefully I can have a stitchy day, not a remainder of the stitchy day, however long there is. <laughs> So, update for you, with regards to the trucks at work. So, as you know, the boss is getting a new truck. Shane's getting the boss's old truck, and the old truck is getting traded in. So, that all happened on Friday. So, the boss rolls up with his brand new truck. Very shiny. Um, looks like a nice truck. He gets out the truck and tells Shane he wants his old truck back, and Shane can have the new truck. <laughs> Unfortunately, Shane can't drive the new truck because he hasn't got the license for that type of truck. Because the boss doesn't like it because it's all electronic inside. It's like, well, you looked at the truck, you went and picked it, so you knew exactly what it was like inside. But yeah, he doesn't like it. So, uh, <laughs> no idea what's going to happen there. Uh, but Shane's happy because the truck he's now driving, the boss's old truck, has aircon, tinted windows. So he's happy. Because his old truck didn't have that. So in when it's a warm day, it gets rather hot in there, plus it's not very quiet in the truck either. So um the new truck well it's New, his new truck is a lot quieter inside, so you can actually hear things. So, so yeah, so he's happy. He's got a new truck. One day. <laughs> Plus, his new truck is an automatic, or his old truck wasn't. So, he likes it because he doesn't now have to change gears all the time. Oops. Alright, so that's that one done. I'll just mark these stitches off. Yeah, I can't believe it when the boss says he didn't like it. <laughs> that way you picked it. But, the best thing about it is, I don't have to worry about the boss working with me, so which is even better. So this one, because I haven't pulled all the colours out yet, I may not have all the colours I need. Uh, so I'm just using the ones from the Super Size Tiger family because it's easier. <laughs> in one of those moves today again. So, you probably hear him calling for the kittens all the time. I thought it was so funny yesterday when I was filming the update video where he photobombed the video. That was so funny. Up close and personal with Tiger. <laughs> 
He wanted all the attention yesterday. Anyone would think it was his birthday. <laughs> So, on my video call with my mum and my brother yesterday, my brother decided to show me around my garden over there. And he has absolutely destroyed it. <laughs> it looks like a weed patch. So, basically he's decided he's doing the garden up uh, how he wants it. That's my garden. Get off her. Um, so, he's pulled up all my decking that was around my fish pond. That's gone. He, ha I had two raised flower beds. Um, one which we said was his flower bed and one was mine. Yep, they're gone. Um, I had another flower bed further down the garden. That's gone. Um, I had a patch of grass wasn't a very big patch of grass, because I didn't want a lot of grass there. Um, so, I had some grass with some uh, paving around it. That's all gone. <laughs> Tag has been a little... What's that one, sir? This morning? Um, so, yeah, so that's gone. <laughs> and there's just plant pots everywhere. Um, with all these different seeds and everything he's done. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear Tiger. He's climbing up the sofa from the back, trying to get through to Kitty. It's a little so-and-so. It's a good job this is my old sofa, so I don't mind him. <laughs> if he just shakes, then that's Tiger diving onto the desk. He's been a little beggar. <clears throat> so, so yeah, so my garden is absolutely um, wrecked. <laughs> Needless to say. Uh, well, oh well, never mind. I'm going to be going from here. Um, and I was like, what are you actually doing to my garden when it's a surprise? I went, what a surprise junkyard. But apparently over in the UK they're having trouble with deliveries and everything. So the way he's waiting on um, a load of stuff to turn up. Um, so he can do whatever he's doing. I know he's moving the greenhouse. I know that much because he asked me about that one. A while ago if you couldn't move the greenhouse. So that's why his flower bed has been knocked down because that's where the greenhouse is going to go. Uh, so I know that much but that's all I know. And so the new fence is up, he's finally got that up. My other brother and his mate come down and they actually managed to get it all in. So that looks pretty good. So, yeah, so now I'm just going to wait and see what he's doing with my garden. <laughs> but that should be fun to see. Mom's doing well. He's doing well. And he, well, I'll say it was still early in the morning when I spoke to them, so I've no idea what he was doing for his birthday. He didn't have any plans, so I don't know if he's gone out anywhere or not. This uh, going all the way across part is going to be a lot of jumping around, so I might change that and just do it out in the middle. So, 
yesterday I kicked Shane out of the house. <laughs> so I sent him down to his mum's because I needed the, I knew for a fact if he stayed here all day yesterday because I wanted to get college work done. His sister would be around, oh, God knows how many times. So I was like, nah, I need the peace and quiet so I can get my college work done. So I kicked him out. So I right, go to your mother's. So he went to his mum's and then to his mates. <laughs> And I've made him aware that obviously I'm still doing my college course today. So yeah, he's not home yet. He's still at his mum's. He said to stay and have a drink. So he'll be back later on. But I've made him aware that obviously I'm doing my college course. So... Mind you, knowing him will come home and go to sleep on the sofa anyway, so... Okay, right, so let's go on with some questions, shall we? I haven't got many questions, I've got a couple. Um, first one is from June, who asks, what makes a Queenslander a Queenslander? <laughs> so, uh, I'm not 100% certain on this, but from what I understand, the old Queenslanders, which is what I mean, um, they are houses that are raised off the ground. So instead of the foundations being, well, instead of the house starting on the foundations, which are in the, um, the, the ground, these have got like legs to raise the, the house off the ground. Now, I'm assuming if Gail and that's watching this, they'll probably correct me if I'm incorrect on any of this. Um, now with the Queenslanders as well, the floors are not sealed. Um, so you have your floorboards down and they don't have the gaps in between sealed up so you can actually see straight through now the reason for this being is because of the heat this is why they have high ceilings is the air is meant to flow under the house up through the floorboards to push the hot air up um, in summertime to keep the house cool. This is my understanding of it anyway. Um, so that's what it does. Um, now the Queenslanders as well also generally only have one skin walls. So your outside wall is your inside wall as I've mentioned before. Some people do put cladding on the outside just to give it that little bit of extra protection but nine out of ten your outside wall is your inside wall um, and then you obviously have your verandas on there as well for sitting out in the summer days and thank you for watching me with all this floss so <laughs> if everything goes askew you know it's dived at it So yeah, so Queenslanders um, also have a, let's say, they have high ceilings. Um, and then they have, I don't know, give up high roofs as well. He's attacking my box with my floss in it. But it's going to be one of these videos, it's just been a pain in the butt. Um, so yeah, so they have um, high ceilings and then they have a high roof on it as well, a lot of them. Um, this is because most, like here, you have your... Um, you're not connected to the water, so you have water tanks. Um, so you have the high roofs to collect as much rain as possible to go into your water tanks. So I think that's what makes them get so hot inside as well. So if I get time in a bit later on, I will film the outside of the house and show you what I mean. Um, And then I'll tag that in as well, uh, somewhere in the video, <laughs> either towards the end or at the end or something like that. I'll also show you the the garden now that Shane's been messing around with it a bit more, and we've got some more flowers in there. So I know someone in my Zoom, Katie, asked about the showing the garden. Obviously, she missed it when I showed it last time. <laughs> so I'll show the garden.
دارم میگن So you're probably only going to get one stitch with me again this week as well. So I do apologize. Now, as I mentioned, I'm in the stitch with me I'm in the back room doing these now because of the sun it's a lot better but the only thing is sometimes the sun shines straight in your eyes when you're trying to stitch which is not a good thing right next question Oh, also from June. Also, are, what are the beaches like near you? Are there sharks or is it safe to go in the water? Uh, <laughs> depends on the time of year. So, the beaches are lovely and clean. Um, that is one thing I like about over here. Um, nine out of ten, the water's crystal clear as well. It doesn't look it when you're right at the water's edge, but if you're looking from, say, above, because uh, there's a couple of like raised towers and stuff like that near the beaches, um, you can see how clear the water is, it's, it's really good. Um, now, you do get sharks around here, uh, but normally it's when, a lot of the time is when the f fish, uh, called bait fish, so they go in big balls of, uh, a big ball of fish. Um, but it's for like when the whales and stuff like that are down here, so they obviously go eating the, the bait fish. Um, so you generally get a lot more sharks that time. So when the fish are migrating or whatever it is they're doing. Um, so you do get great whites, you get tiger sharks, uh, hammerhead sharks, I think, um, nurse sharks as well. I think they're called nurse sharks. So you do get a fair few sharks. Um, now, you get more down south than what you do in Queensland, uh, but you still still do get them. Uh, there has been a couple of uh, attacks from the Great Whites and fatalities, uh, but they're for mainly being like surfers who have been caught. So obviously, with surfing, the sharks think that you're a seal. From what I understand, because obviously you're just aboard with some legs, so they think you're a seal, so that's why 9 out of 10 a shark will attack a surfer because they think it's a seal pup or something like that. Uh, the only thing with the beaches over here is when it gets to summertime, you then get a lot of blue balls, which are jellyfish. Uh, and you get lots of jellyfish. And I mean lots, so you go to the beach, there's thousands of them. Um, so they're either on the sand, waiting for the water to wash them back in, or they're in the sea. So you have to be extra careful, because you will more than likely get stung. I haven't been stung by them yet. Um, Shane's niece says, we went to the beach on Boxing Day once, and she got stung. That was quite, that was quite funny. She was like a big baby, what do I do, what do I do? It's like, well, you need to pee on yourself. I'm not peeing on myself. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to say, this, she was quite lucky. I think it only just brushed her, so um, it didn't sting too long. But, yeah, it was so funny. Even the lifeguards were laughing at her. <laughs> I mean, if you do get sting, there are some... On some beaches, there's stations where you can, if you get stung, there's, they've got the uh, anti-stinging stuff, vinegar, or whatever it is. Um, so some beaches have those. Um, some don't. You can just see the lifeguard, and they'll, they generally have stuff on hand. But, but yeah, the beaches are really, really nice. I enjoy going to the beach. When I get there. I haven't been to the beach. That's, yeah, last time I went to the beach was in 2018 when I got here. So, on the boxing day. <laughs> But I did get really, really burnt. I burned really quickly. Um, 
But this particular time we went to the beach, I left the sun cream in the car by mistake. Um, where you park your car, generally you've got a bit of a walk to get to the beach. I was a bit of a walk, probably about five minutes. <clears throat> and I'd left the sun cream in the car. So we were only at the beach for half an hour and I was red raw, literally. And then, you know, when you get the uh, kind of like prickly heat where you're just itching all the time and yeah, I had that for like a week. It was horrible. So since then, I've not been back to the beach. <laughs> but saying that, we did move up here where the beaches aren't close by. So that would probably be one of the reasons as well. But yes, I do love going to the beach. So that was the um, question from June. And I think the next one's I've got from Gail. Yep, Gail. Uh, so Gail Phillips. Obviously I answered her questions last time. So she's given me another couple of questions. I mean, we've got five questions this time. Um, so question one, name the top five, your top five artists from heaven and earth. Well, obviously Mr. Krasny is the number one. So that's, he's the one who charted the Tiger family and a fair few of my other charts that I have. <laughs> so Mr. Kras Jan Patrick Krasny. Uh, I like Randall Spangler. Um, Ciro Machetti. On a girl singer, and um, I haven't looked at all of them on um, the Heaven and Earth site, but um, Anne Stokes, I like some of her work as well. I think that was five. I'm going with five. That was five, definitely. Uh, next one. If you were stuck on a desert island and then conduct, can only have a three projects to stitch on, what would you choose? Well, it'd have to be uh, Tiger Family. Uh, Tiger Family. Uh, Super Size Tiger Family. Definitely have to be that one. Um, I would probably say as well my Sunset Koala. Uh, which was the one I did on last week's Stitch With Me, so the one from the Crossy Studio. Because I like that one, though. It looks, I think that one's going to look awesome when he's done. Um, and probably London. The Theatre Governor piece. That would be quite fun. On the desert island, trying to stitch on black fabric. <laughs> Hopefully it's sunny. Do you prefer cake or cookies? Cookies. Um, I'm not a big cake eater. Um, I never really have been. This is like a sponge cake with custard. So a hot sponge cake with custard. Uh, but sponge cakes, I can take them or leave them. I'm not a big cake eater. Uh, but cookies, I love me some cookies. Uh, Got to be chocolate cookies though. <laughs> so we have some over here uh, in one of our main supermarkets, Coles. And uh, they do uh, boxes of chocolate chip cookies or triple chocolate chip cookies. So yeah, they might go to. I don't get them very often. I try to be good. Uh, but yeah, I'm a sucker for cookies. Cookies, I love me cookies. Uh, if Shane said he wanted to stitch on one of your current haids, which one would you let him stitch on and why? None of them. Why? Because I said so. <laughs> um, well, that would be fun because I was stitching on some set koala and Shane saw the thing. He says, I can't even see the holes on that one. So, you wouldn't be able to stitch on anything that's on 28 count. So the only other ones I've got that are on 25 count, hay wise is my winged companions or my supersized tiger family. And there's no way he's touching my supersized tiger family. So it would have to be the winged companions, uh, which is by Anne Stokes, uh, 
which is the one I wish I wouldn't I wish it would do it and get me out page one uh, which is the one with all the dark stitching on page one which is very demotivating so you could stitch on that one by all means and get me out page one into page two <laughs> But yeah, no, I'm going to say it was so funny when I was stitching the Sunset Quality. When I can't even see the holes on that, he says, where, how do you know where you're stitching? Because I've got better eyesight than you. He's meant to wear glasses, but he never does. Probably if he had his glasses on, he might be able to see, but I doubt it. And the question five. If someone offered you $50 uh, to eat a full stalk of celery, would you do it? Not on this earth. No chance. have to be a considerable couple of extra zeros on the end of that for me to eat a full stick of celery. Celery is absolutely disgusting and should be banned off the face of the earth. So in order for me to eat a full stick of celery, it would have to be a considerable amount of money. Maybe a million dollars. I'd probably do it for a million dollars. No less. I can't stand celery. Right. That was it from Gail. So thanks for the questions, Gail. <laughs> from Stacy. Um, this is based on my sunset piece uh, when I was doing that last week. Uh, so do you have a larger stash and do you set up floss for each project or just use a main set that you work from? So um, I have a large stash of charts. I don't have a large stash of uh, fabric and I don't have a large stash of floss. Um, so generally I will I have a couple of Kids, uh, kids, projects that which are fully kitted up. Not many, but I have a couple. So generally, if I don't have any spare floss for a project that I'm using, I will dip into those and just pull it from there and use that one, and then replace the the uh, the floss. So I make a list of what colour I've pulled out, I'll say, from this one. And then uh, this one from uh, Super Size Tiger. And then what I will do is, when I do another order, I will, uh, with JK's, I will order the floss that I've stolen to do another project. Just so that I know I've got it and I'm not going to run out of it. Obviously, when I finish a project, then I just stick those on the thread drops and just have them in a bag. So I have a bag full of ones which have come from, like, say, Mini Deer Creek when I finish that one. Um, and then I will just use those ones if they fit into a, a project. So, yes, I don't have a big stash unfortunately not yet at some point maybe but like it's one thing I like about doing 10 stitching on 28 count the coverage is really really good compared to on 25 count 25 count is not bad but 28 count is definitely a lot better if you wanted to do 10 stitch it's also not as big either. <laughs> so your project seems to fill in quicker. Um, boom. And I think. I'll also put in as well at the end some pictures of the trucks. So Shane's old truck. 
and what his new truck will be and what the boss's new truck looks like. The boss's new truck, I said he wants to get it, um, what do you call it, wrapped with like red and blue. He could pretend he's Optimus Prime driving down the streets. <laughs> Yeah, when you turned up with that, it was so funny. The amount of people that was like hanging around, just like trying to have a neb inside it. So there was like, well, Shane for one, and then the boss's son, uh, the boss's wife. <laughs> his, his other son who works there, he just looked at it and walked off. <laughs> He's not into stuff like that. Uh, but. One of his sons is right into his cars and stuff like that. So he was in there and driving it around. And I was like, just move it from where it is because it, cause it's so shiny. It's got like the chrome fuel tanks, uh, which are on the side of the truck, obviously. And uh, where he had it parked, it was shine. The sun was shining straight off of that, straight into my eyes on my saw. And it's like, move <laughs> the truck. So I was quite happy when his son decided to take it for a spin and then parked it facing the opposite direction. I was like, yes. But then the boss doesn't like it. The boss is a bit particular. At the end of the day, his truck has to be facing a certain direction. I don't know why. It just has to be. So of course the boss <coughs> decided to move it and face it the other direction. And then when his son used the truck, he actually turned it around in the yard. For some reason, the boss cannot turn a truck around in the yard. So he pulled out of the yard, and drove all the way around the block to bring it back in, facing the direction he wanted it to. <laughs> Even though there is another yard over the road, so he could have easily just pulled into that one and then reversed out. So it was in the direction he wanted to, but no, he drove all the way around the block. I think he was just showing it off, really. And everyone at work was like, so he's just bought a brand new truck. His trailer turns up on Monday. <clears throat> um, they had to buy a new saw because one of the saws broke. Unfortunately, it wasn't mine. And I was like, they're going to buy all this, but they claim they haven't got enough money to pay us any more wages. <laughs> so, yep, that's how it works. Can't take their money away from them. <laughs> Stitches is down, just put in then. I've gone wrong. There. Okay. Mr. Stitch, no one right in the way. I didn't miss a stitch on the wrong row. <laughs> I've not marked off a row, so I'm looking at the wrong row. Duh. There we go, now it looks right. See how far I'm up to. Hmm, 40 minutes already. It's gone really, really quick. So I'm going to finish this thread then. And we'll call it a day for the stitch with me. And then I can get on with my college work. Since I don't have long to get it all handed in. I'll say if I can, if I remember, if I've got the time, I'll do a quick video on the outside of the house. If not, you'll have to wait till another video for that one. So if you don't see anything else on the end, <laughs> you know why. So, as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. And if you do have any questions or comments, please feel free to either drop those down below in the description box, well, below the description box, 
Um, or you can email me again, dizzystitcher at gmail.com um, or on Instagram at dizzystitcher. Again, all this is linked down below in the description box. So, to my next video, which will obviously be my update video next weekend. Hope you get plenty of stitching done or crafting. Hope you stay safe wherever you live. great rest of your week so this will probably be up on Wednesday I think so there we go let's see what we've how many stitches we've done so 206 so not a bad start so this chart has 165,900 stitches I've done 206 and I'm at 0.12% so this may take a while <laughs> So that's everything from me then guys. So thank you very much as I say for watching. Um, and I will see you in my next video. So take care, stay safe and bye bye for now.